I'm being accused of rape and I don't know if I actually did it. Am I the asshole? Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I repeat, this is not my story time. This all started two years ago at a party. Two years ago, my friends called me up and told me they had a party to go to. Ironically, I did not want to go to this party. I felt really tired from work and I just wanted the night off to chill. That's until my friend called me and told me that the girl that I liked would be at the party. Here's a little backstory on the girl and me. Her and I met through mutual friends and from the moment that I met her, I really liked her. The night I met her, I asked her out and she said no. So I left it at that. Of course, my feelings didn't change for her. I still liked her. Anytime I would see her at parties or friends' houses, we would always chat. I never asked her out again, but she could clearly tell that I still liked her. I had a bad habit of staring at her, so when my friend told me that she'd be at the party, I decided to go. As soon as we got to the party, I saw that she was talking to this one guy. Now I have to confess, it made me really angry. This is when I decided to have a few beers. Now here's when things start going bad. I'm starting to get tipsy and my friends start telling me to go talk to her. I said no, but they insisted. Instead of sticking to my guns, I decided to do what my friends wanted me to do. I walked up to this girl, not even saying hello, and I said, are you dating this guy? While this guy is standing right next to us. That's when she pushes me aside and says it's none of your business part two. I'm being accused of rape and I don't know if I actually did it. Am I the asshole? Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I repeat, this is not my story time. That's when she pushes me to the side and tells me it's none of my business. That's when the guy that was standing next to her tells me to leave. So I did. I walked back to my friends completely defeated and embarrassed. I felt humiliated. Almost five minutes later, she comes up to me and apologizes. She said, I'm sorry, I pushed you. I told her it was okay and if we could just talk. We went to the backyard and I asked her why she wasn't interested in me. That's when she told me that she had been in an abusive relationship and she wasn't looking for anything else. I told her that I wasn't looking for a relationship either and that I just really liked her. Basically, I just wanted to hang out with her. She said she wanted to stay away from guys for now, and I said, why? And that's when she kissed me. I was completely shocked. I was not expecting that. Now, I could tell that she had been drinking too because she was a little tipsy, so I kissed her back. I could hear my friends cheering in the background. They're such idiots. So I asked her if she wanted to go somewhere more private. We ended up going to one of the bedrooms in the house, and we kept on kissing. At this point, she did not say no. It felt like she wanted it just as much as I did, and we went for it. And to be honest, it only lasted about a minute. After we finished, we kissed and we went back to the party. She held my hand for the rest of the night. In my eyes, things had gone pretty good. But then my worst nightmare began. Part 3 is up. I'm being accused of rape and I don't know if I actually did it. Am I the asshole? Disclaimer, this is not my story time. I repeat, this is not my story time. After we did the deed, she held my hand for the rest of the night. And there were witnesses to her kissing me and holding my hand that night. A few moments later, she completely disappeared. I didn't see her at all for the next three days. I decided to call her the next day, but she did not answer her phone. I also sent her messages, but she didn't text back. Four days later, I get a knock on my door. And it's her dad. And that's when he told me that his daughter was accusing me of rape. I was in complete shock when he said that. Then he asked me what my version was. I told him exactly what happened and he said that she probably said no and I kept going. I told him that at no point did she say no and that people had seen us kissing and holding hands throughout the night. Then he said I took advantage of her being drunk, but she wasn't even that drunk. He also said she was probably so drunk that she didn't even realize she was holding my hand. Here's the thing. After he left, I sat down and started thinking about the entire night. And I really started thinking back. Did she say no? Did she tell me to stop? I was drunk at the time, but I swear to God she didn't. Or at least I didn't hear her say it. Her body language wasn't saying stop. Here's the thing. My parents have a lot of money. Now they're asking my parents to just give them lots of money. And that they'll drop everything. My parents are just going to pay them the money. What should I do? Am I the asshole for telling my wife the lock on my daughter's door does not get removed until my brother-in-law and his daughters are out of our house? My brother-in-law Sammy lost his home shortly after his divorce 10 months ago. He moved in with us and brought his twin daughters Olivia and Sloan 18 with him a couple of months ago. His sister, my wife, and I have one daughter, Zoe 16, and she and her cousins aren't close but get along fine. Olivia and Sloan have no respect for Zoe's privacy, none. They used to walk into her room and take everything they get their hands on. Makeup, phone, accessories, clothes, school laptop, etc. Zoe complained a lot and I've already asked the girls to respect respect Zoe's privacy and stop taking things. My wife and Sammy saw no issue with this. After all, they're girls and this is typical teenager girl behavior. I completely disagree. The last straw was when Zoe bought a $60 MAC makeup kit that looks like a paint set that she saved up for over a month and one of the girls, Sloan, took it without permission and ruined it by mixing sheets together while using it. Don't know much about makeup, but that's what Zoe said when she found the kit on her bed and was crying. I told my wife and she said she asked Sloan to apologize, but I got Zoe a lock after I found out she was moving valuable belongings out of the house because of this incident. The girls were extremely upset. Sammy asked about it and I straight up told him. He said, my girls aren't thieves. It's normal that girls of the same age borrow each other's stuff. He said that Zoe could easily get another makeup kit for $15 from Walmart and shouldn't even be buying expensive adult makeup in the first place and suggested my wife take care of this defect in Zoe's personality trying to appear older than she is. Oh, this is where the claws come out. He accused me of being overprotective and babying Zoe with this level of enablement.
I told them that this is between me and my wife, but she shamed me for putting a lock on Zoe's door for her cousins to see and preventing them from spending time with her, saying I was supposed to treat them like daughters, then demanded I remove it, but I said this lock does not get removed until her brother and his daughters are out of the house. She got mad I was implying we kicked them out and said her family will hate me for this. So I reminded her that I let Sammy and his family move in, which is something her own family refused to do. So she should start with shaming or blaming them for not taking their own son and nieces and granddaughters in. If it wasn't for her family's unwillingness to help, we wouldn't be dealing with this much disturbance at home. Everyone's been giving me and Zoe silent treatment, and my wife is very much upset over this. Go, Dad. Good for you. Story time about the girl who was absolutely obsessed with me in high school. So it was my junior year in high school. And I'm just going to tell you guys the first story of how I knew that she was absolutely obsessed with me and wanted to be me. Well, I had been dating this guy for like a month. And I sent him nudes. Well, my nudes got spread around the school. And everybody knew they were mine. Until this one girl, and we're going to call her Addie, started saying that they were hers. I guess one of my friends was talking about it in class and they were like, OMG, did you hear that her nudes got leaked? AKA mine. And Addie was sitting at the same table and she said, no, those are my nudes. And at first I thought this girl was just trying to be nice. I was like, oh, well, that's nice of her, you know. Like maybe she's just trying to say that so that way nobody will bully me, I guess. Well, the one day I texted her about it. And I was like, hey, like, you don't have to do that. It's fine. I'll take responsibility for it. I did it. And she was like, what are you talking about? Those are my nudes. Like for part two. Part two about the girl who was obsessed with me. So like I said, she basically told me that those were her nudes. Even though I took the pictures and I knew they were mine. But I was like, okay, whatever. I'm not going to argue with her. Well, then I get a text from my boyfriend. And he goes, what the fuck? You're so weird. Why would you send me somebody else's nudes? And I'm just sitting there like, what the fuck? And I tried to explain to him that I had no fucking clue why this girl was saying they were hers. But then he said that I was weird as fuck and he broke up with me. So like a week later, I see them walking around school together. And my friends tell me that they're now dating. And I really wasn't that mad about it. I was like, okay, maybe that's the only way that she could think of to get a boyfriend. Well, I forgot that my Instagram was logged in on his phone. Because he had super bad trust issues. And wanted to make sure I wasn't cheating on him. So I text him and I'm like, hey, can you take my Instagram off your phone? And I saw that he read my text message, but I got no response. Well, a week later, you guys are never going to guess what fucking happened. Like for part three. Part three about the girl who was obsessed with me. So like I said, I texted him and I got no response back. So I run into him the next day at school. And I'm like, hey, did you get my text? And he's like, text about what? And I was like, taking my Instagram off your phone. And he was like, oh yeah, Addy did it. Don't worry. And I didn't think anything of it because, you know, I'm like, oh, well, she's done torturing me. Well, I was very wrong. So in my first period, I went to go sit with my group of friends because all three of us had that class together. And when I walk in, I realize that Addie is sitting in my seat. So I pull up a chair to the table and they were all ignoring me and texting each other right next to me. So I was like, okay, what's wrong? And one of my friends goes, oh, nothing, just the fact that you DM Gigi and I's boyfriends saying that we were whores and that they should date you. By the way, Gigi was my other friend. And after that, this bitch Addie has the nerve to make the comment, that's really fucked up. Why would you do that? So then I beat her ass and lost all my friends. Am I the asshole for telling my dying son his dad is leaving me? I, 53 female, have a son, 26 male, with my soon-to-be ex-husband, 50 male. My dear son has a terminal illness and has transitioned from palliative care to hospice care. Needless to say, we're all devastated and have been hiding our separation from him. Unfortunately, the pressure of caring for our son and manipulation from a neighbor led me to a one night of indiscretion, and now my husband wants a divorce. He told me he wouldn't file until after our son passes away, and I was appreciative about this at first. But now I'm rethinking this and told him if he's not man enough to fight for the best thing that's ever happened to him, then I would tell our son that his dad is leaving me. My husband and our entire extended family are lining up and begging me not to do it. They said this news would devastate him in his final weeks, and he doesn't have to find out. But it doesn't feel right to lie to him. He's a young man who should be treated with dignity while he's here. He deserves the truth and to know that his dad is giving up on our family. He doesn't need to be lied to and coddled like a child. I've already made up my mind and that unless my husband agrees to counseling and to not file for divorce by tomorrow, I'm telling our son the truth so we can all have closure. It's his family too and he should know that his dad is about to rip it apart. <laughs> Where is the accountability here? 
There is none. None. There is absolutely none. This is a narcissist. I mean, this sounds like a very narcissistic thing to do. I, I, I know. And we've tried. We really have tried not to throw that around. Like we really evaluated how much we were saying it. Like we try not to throw that around. But like this. Is, I haven't said that word in a long time. I, that's what I'm saying. Like we've tried. Oh, okay. We really like not <laughs> said it. And I think I think you are potentially right. Like there is no insight into anyone but herself. Mm-hmm. He's willing to throw away the best thing that's ever happened to him. He's not willing to fight for us. Ma'am. Yeah. Ma'am, you had an affair. Well, the, exactly. Okay, part two about the guy who pretended to be gay in high school to get closer to all the girls. So like I said, we all lift up our shirts and because we were on FaceTime, we couldn't see if he screenshotted anything. And then the one night we were having a sleepover. And he was really upset that night because apparently the popular boys were making fun of him. Because the only reason why he was gay is because he couldn't get with any girls. So me and my friends thought of a solution. But like, we were just trying to be nice. And now looking on it, that is the dumbest shit that we've ever done. And we're all like, oh, well, why don't you just say that you did the nasty with all of us? And he was like, well, I don't think they'll believe it. Even if you guys said, yeah, you did do it. So we were like, okay, then let's do it for real. So that night, we did the nasty. All five of us. So that morning, we all wake up and he's literally gone. Like, he didn't wake us up to say goodbye, which wasn't normal. So the weekend goes past. Monday, we go to school. And in the morning, my friends and I have time to walk around and everybody's just staring at us like for part three. Part three about the guy who pretended to be gay to get closer to all the girls. So like I said, we got to school and everybody's just looking at us. And all of a sudden we get tagged in this Instagram account. And there's a video of all five of us doing the nasty in my bedroom. There's pictures of me and my friends getting undressed. And there's a screenshot of the FaceTime where we all showed our boobs. And under the post, he was exposing a bunch of shit about us. And my one best friend was literally crying so hard because everybody now knew that she was born with, like, both parts. And also, after gym class, we would just tell him to come in the locker room, and the teacher didn't care because he was gay. So there were also a bunch of pictures of other girls on there, too. I'm not even going to talk about the legal trouble, but my parents made me move schools because they cared about my image, and they didn't want me hanging out with any of those friends anymore. He got expelled. The teacher got fired for that bullshit. So that just ruined having a gay best friend for me. Oh, also, my parents saw me have a fight some in my bedroom. 